Hello, I'm Craig Eastbrecht, Regional Sales and Service Manager at Cambrian Credit Union. Welcome to the Red River North Tourism 2021 Virtual Garden and Art Tour. There are many spectacular gardens in Red River North. In the past, we welcome you to enjoy them and speak with the gardeners and linger over blossoms. We've not been able to do that in the past two summers and the community has missed your visits. This year has offered our gardeners even more challenges, drought, baking heat, hail and high winds. Yet we still have beautiful gardens to share. What makes this award-winning garden and art tour unique is that the inclusion of visual artists with their work and young musicians in the gardens. So we're pleased to bring you this virtual tour, a little taste of what you'll experience on future tours when you come and visit us in person. Cambrian Craig Union has a 60 year history of investing in the communities where our members and our employees live and work. Sponsorship of local events and special projects like this one is an important way Cambrian shows the support to our communities. Now please join us all here in Red River North and enjoy the tour. Welcome to Johnny's Garden in the RRM of St. Andrews. Five acres of trees, shrubs and flowers in a beautifully landscaped setting including two pools, a stream, rocks, tastefully placed decorative objects and furniture. Johnny Fakus is a landscaping and yard care professional whose own grounds are testament to his landscaping expertise, artistic ability, and attention to detail. Fittingly, we see three talented people in the arts field here on the grounds. Author Melissa Stoddard, artist Bev Galbraith, and children's author Bruno Palumba. All art seen in this video is the work of Bev Galbraith. Johnny moved from the Fort Garry area to his present location seven years ago. Three full-sized moving vans were needed to carry all the shrubs, rocks, and accessories that he had at the time. As you will see in the next few minutes, the sheer size of the grounds have constantly grown as he replaces, upgrades, reorganizes, and adds to this beautiful panorama. Such a move today would be much more daunting, if not impossible. Johnny says this year's drought has made it very challenging to maintain the yard and keep it beautiful. But as you can see, he has met the challenge. wide range of paintings that we see here at Johnny's are an excellent display of the versatility of artist Bev Galbraith. A unique feature of Johnny's garden 
is that many of the trees, shrubs, and flowers that you see do not theoretically belong in this area. But he is constantly experimenting by trying plants and trees that are outside of this hardiness zone. And in so many cases, he has succeeded. Touring through the garden is an excellent exercise for any gardener, providing them with an opportunity to come up with new ideas. In addition to displaying Bev's artwork in the two nooks, one can easily imagine ourselves seated here reading works by the two authors whom we met at the beginning of the video. Like any true artist, Johnny's landscaping and garden ideas are a result of visions he has of what could be. He says many of his ideas come after looking out his window and imagining what could be changed or added. We hope he never stops looking and imagining. Wishme is more than a gift shop. It's a place to learn, it's a place to connect, it's a place where community thrives. To support our community, shop at Wishme. Red Feather Farm is important for its role in Selkirk's history. In the early 1900s, it was part of a poultry farm. During World War I, it was turned over to the War Department and the former chicken barns became military barracks for the 108th Selkirk and Manitoba Battalion, nicknamed the Cocks or Roosters, with a fighting cock as their insignia. When the city of Selkirk approved the Edston Place residential development on the property in the mid-1970s, it retained a green space. June Minish, one of the founders and the first president of the Selkirk and District Horticultural Society, along with her husband Arnold, got permission to plant a flower garden around the green space and added a truckload of mushroom compost to enrich the soil. And so began the history of Red Feather Farm as a garden. They planted fruit trees and perennials and Morden roses. It was June's intention to grow named perennials so that visitors to the garden would have an idea what could be grown here in Selkirk. They started the walnut tree and the maple tree from seed in 1979. Eventually, June says what started as a labor of love became too large for two people to manage, and in 2003, she asked the Horticultural Society to help maintain the garden, which they have done ever since. 
Today, in addition to the well-kept green space and beautiful flowers and trees, the area known as Red Feather Farm Memorial Park features an information plaque about the 108th Battalion, as well as a memorial dedicated to the officers and men of the 108th. Thanks to the foresight and dedication of June Minish and the hard work of her and her husband Arnold, and members of the Selkirk and District Horticultural Society, an important part of our history has been preserved while providing an attractive addition to the gardens of Selkirk. The Community Perennial Garden at the corner of Main Street and Schultz Avenue was created in 2012 by the Selkirk and District Horticultural Society in conjunction with the City of Selkirk and Communities in Bloom and is the second of three ongoing garden projects of the Horticultural Society. The garden was designed by founding society members Diane Mitchell and Anne Marie Kerbis, with the city providing the land, equipment, labor and signage, as well as partnering with Communities in Bloom to install the Stepping Stone Pathway. Horticultural Society members provided the perennials from their gardens, the city purchased several shrubs, and the family and friends of former Horticultural Society Secretary Marjorie McMahon donated a Lord Selkirk maple tree in her memory. The community bench was donated by the SDHS in 2014 to commemorate the organization's 20th anniversary. Organizer Nia Massey worked with the city of Selkirk to pour its foundation and assemble it. Plants include Winnipeg Park roses, bleeding hearts, zinnias, Joe Pie Weed, Goldenrod, Monk's Hood, and various grasses. The park is beautifully maintained by the Horticultural Society membership, who carry out spring and fall cleanup, as well as weekly weeding. The perennial garden is also a monarch way station that provides milkweed, nectar sources, and shelter needed to sustain monarch butterflies as they pass through North America on their migration. It is certified and registered by Monarch Watch as an official Monarch way station. The garden is not just flowers, butterflies and grasses, but a pleasant meeting place and rest stop, a place to sit for a while amidst the beauty of nature. Welcome to the home of Janet Dornian in the RM of St. Clement's. Janet will literally steal your heart away with her artwork in the medium of steel.
is this lurking in the bushes? Why, I do believe it is none other than the Sasquatch. And look who he is stalking. Fortunately, Mother Bear has seen him too and is protecting her cubs. We head toward the house, which is tastefully adorned with corn and tomatoes in the front garden bed. We can see one of Janet's horse trellises in the garden. And in the window, Janet herself is watering her corn, Roma tomatoes, and peppers, bell, banana, and jalapeno. The corn, incidentally, is giant corn variety. The fence serves as a backdrop to gorgeous zinnias and a bumblebee bath filled with glass pebbles and steel sand to attract bumblebees and butterflies, and is a perfect display area for Janet's leaf designs, particularly the maple leaf. Beets, leeks, and carrots are grown in the raised wooden bed. Three garden beds together on the east side of the house are herb beds. One of them is filled with garlic. One is filled with chives, thyme, rosemary, and sage. The third is devoted to celery, onions, and Thai basil. The large steel raised bed features climbing beans, peas, cucumbers, and cherry tomatoes, and romaine lettuce earlier in the season. Moving indoors, we are treated to a stunning array of Janet's steel creations. Snowy owls and sasquatches, wolves and evergreens, angel wings and polar bears, and more. Some on Tyndall stone bases. heard of a wall of sound? Well, how about a wall of art? Much of Janet's work is perfect for gift-giving and visitors. It's art that you can fit in your suitcase. And we leave Janet still watering. Yes, Janet, it's a garden and art that will steal your heart away, er, steal your art away.
These are the community gardens at the Water Tower Park, a unique feature on the Selkirk landscape. The community gardens were established in 2019 as a joint initiative of the City, Communities in Bloom, and Selkirk Home Hardware. Residents of the area rent plots mainly for growing vegetables, but some flowers are also planted, particularly marigolds. One feature of the garden project that makes it unique is the fact that participants rent their plot at no charge, a rarity in the world today. Needless to say, there is a waiting list for plots. The Selkirk Water Tower is now a piece of art, thanks to an initiative by the City of Selkirk this past summer. The iconic tower, which was built in 1961 to hold 200,000 gallons of water, towers at 135 feet above the gardens and park. It badly needed a paint job since it was last painted in 1998. The design for the Water Tower mural is the work of Robin Kapersky and the work of repairing and restoring the imposing structure was carried out by Carlson Commercial and Industrial Services. And so we leave the Selkirk Community Gardens waiting for next summer's crop of eager gardeners. The St. Andrews Heritage Centre was built between 1852 and 1854 as a home for the minister of St. Andrews on the Red. This building, an example of Red River style architecture, is a Canadian National Historic Site depicting the history of the people who lived here. In addition to a gift shop, family activities and guided tours with interpreters, it features well tended grounds and picnic areas. As we enter the yard, we pass by tools used by the farmers and gardeners of yesteryear. The kitchen garden and spiral herb garden were constructed by the Interlake group of gardeners who also donated plants for this and the front garden. Agnes Tomoto, a group member works with the interpreters to decide on a new planting plan each year. A 
old-fashioned washing machines, a separator for separating cream from fresh whole milk, and a mill for cleaning grain become pieces of art set against the background of the yard and rectory and help provide historical context to the setting. Farming implements and artifacts were donated by the RM of St. Andrews and local families. The front flower gardens and foliage on the pillars were also donated by the Interlake Gardeners and designed by Agnes Tomoto. Grapes, hops, profusion zinnias, calendula, and some prairie grasses make for tasteful adornments to the rectory. The gardens and flower beds are cared for by the interpreters, students who guide tours of the facility. They also hand painted the tiles and descriptors for each plant in the kitchen garden. The secret garden was created as a personal private space for the on-site ministers to reflect and engage in personal prayers after the rectory became a designated historical building open to the public. Aside from signage, this area has been left in its natural state and effective next year will be tended by the on-site workers. With more hands-on attention and hopefully more natural moisture than this year, it will once again be a beautiful, restful place to visit. The view of the Red River adds to the natural beauty found in the garden, which is a secret no more. People looking for an ideal place to picnic should consider the Heritage Center. Where else will you find such a perfect setting combining nature with history? St. Andrew's Heritage Gardens. In addition to being the home of the St. Andrew's Rectory, an excellent example of mid-19th century Red River architecture, also provides a snapshot of the inhabitants' life and the history of the area, and is home to well-maintained gardens and grounds which are a real attraction each summer. Cynthia Bohm is a renowned Cree artist who practices the art form of her ancestors, beadwork. She has received awards for her work, and her beadwork is featured on Manitoba Mukluks. Cynthia has created a unique artist's retreat in her backyard on River Road in St. Andrews, where she displays her wide range of abilities. Cynthia was commissioned by the Glasgow Museum's Resource Centre in Scotland to create a beaded art mask in 2020. This commission was very special to Cynthia since her great-grandfather came from Scotland to Canada in the mid-1800s. As we can see, Cynthia's artistic ability is varied. Here she is surrounded by samples of her painting, a charcoal sketch, as well as a table filled with her moccasins and mitts, and of course, beadwork. <laughs> <laughs> 
The art on display is acrylic paints and pencil. Her favorite is pencil. Drawing real life portraits is her preferred subject. Cynthia's goal is to learn and produce beaded items like the pieces that were made by her ancestors, now often found only in collections or museums. Art truly displays and celebrates her ancestors and her Cree culture. On the table display is a historical sled dog blanket Cynthia made for her puppy. Learning historical beadwork is very important for her. The beaded sled dog blankets have a unique history as they were common in the 17 and 1800s for sled dog teams. Sled dogs were dressed in elaborately beaded blankets that were draped over the dog and weren't meant for warmth but for intended for show and were placed on the sled dog teams as they approached a post or community or village to let them know of their arrival by the sound of the bells on the blankets. They were adorned with bright beaded floral motifs made from stroud wool, home tan hide, yard fringe, bells, and pom-poms. Her little lab is named Masqua, which means bear in Cree and Musquaw deserved his own historical sled dog blanket, and Cynthia says making it was a learning experience for her. Also on the table are a number of pairs of moccasins and other items. Cynthia has memories of her grandparents wearing pointed moccasins that her grandmothers made. One pair are pointed toe moccasins, another pair are pointed toe moccasin wraparounds. This style it was very common in her hometown of Norway House. After hearing of the horrific news about the residential school in Kamloops, Cynthia made the little moccasins in honor of these children. Her great-grandmother was a residential school survivor, and making the little mo moccasins was healing, thinking of her beloved granny. The other items on the table were beaver fur gauntlets she made for her husband and a pair of beaver mittens made for herself. The beaded art piece on the right was an award-winning piece with the Manitoba Society of Artists Open Juried Art Show in 2019. It is named My Journey Home, Honoring Our Grandmothers, and received the Barbara Cook Andres Award for first place overall. <music> Cynthia has many perennials in her yard, among them rose bushes. Growing up in Norway House, her favorite flowers were tiger lilies and roses, and much of her beadwork features rosebuds. Nothing is more a restful scene than a hammock strung between two trees. Next to one tree, a chair full of beautiful flowers, and a pair of Cynthia's moccasins on the ground beneath. Her place is truly an oasis in the desert of fast-paced life in the hustle and bustle that is today's world.
Welcome to Brentwood, the cottage on the lake, the home of Marilee Mollard and Charlie Burt. This is a 100-year-old matchbox design cottage, one of only two such cottages remaining along Lake Winnipeg. We will be treated to a variety of works of art, courtesy of Gail Halliwell of Studio 410 and Janet Dornian of Steal Your Art Away, as well as flower beds and well-groomed lawns in this lakeside setting. This pelican barn quilt features Gail Hallowell's personal design. Here is another of Gail's unique barn quilt designs, placed tastefully between two begonias and another pelican barn quilt. The rocky shoreline serves as a rugged frame for the artwork of Gail Hallowell on the deck. Her wide range of talents are displayed here, a number of pieces which are smaller versions of her larger works, as well as pottery and jewelry made from pottery. Some pieces of steel yard art by Janet Dornian add to the setting, ranging from a bear to bulrushes to well-designed trellises useful for prettying up your yard. This acrylic by Gail is her interpretation of the Lake Winnipeg shoreline, which is a huge part of the lives of people along the lake. In the adjoining garden, we see one of Janet Dornian's trellises, this one in the shape of a horse. This is Gail's artistic ability at its finest. A gnarled piece of driftwood becomes a beautiful painting. Pastas wrapped around the rear deck with planters filled with coleus become a perfect backdrop for one of Gail's watercolors. Janet Dornian's steel art koi fish and baskets filled with begonias add character and beauty to the garage walls. The artwork of two talented ladies enhances the beauty of the grounds and helps to illustrate that a cottage on the lake can include a well-developed yard and garden. We bid farewell to the cottage on the lake 
with a fitting picture of friends surrounded by nature and art. There is so much to see and do here all year around. Whatever the season, there's always a reason to spend time in Red River North. Across some nations, a chance to 